Nick Robinson here for Polygon, and today I'm joined by Simon Tomley, aka Stealth. Hello. We've also got Hunter Bridges. Hey, everybody. And Brad Flick. So. Uh, and you guys are three of the people working on Sonic Mania, uh, what is perhaps my most anticipated video game right now. I wanted to grab a little bit of time with you guys on the last day of E3 to kind of talk about the game, uh, what you've put into it, uh, your backgrounds and stuff like that. Can you kind of go into quickly, uh, starting with Simon, what your role is on Sonic Mania? Okay, so I'm uh, one of the programmers. I program for stuff like uh, the enemies, the objects, the bosses. Cool. Hunter, what are you, what's your role? Uh, I am also a programmer. Um, it's pretty tough to hang in there with Simon and Christian. <laughs> the um, legends. I'm also doing uh, project management and sound cool, design. Cool. So. Uh, and I'm just uh, chilling on the level design. Okay, so let's talk about the level design. So the thing that is so striking to me, having played Sonic Mania like six or seven or eight times now, <laughs> right. is the level design is, from in my perspective, the best level design a Sonic game has ever had, including the original 2D games. Dang. It is the the way things are strung together is so like elegant and and I, I guess what I want to hear from you is like what are the elements that you guys pull from from the original Sonic games? What's important to you? How do you strike a balance between levels that w will put a bad nick in your way versus won't like mm -hmm. that that sort of that sort of stuff? Sure. Um, well, when it comes to the uh, the classic levels that are in Sonic Mania, uh, we definitely want to, you know, tick the boxes off in terms of like hitting all the the beats uh, from the previous layouts of the games. Mm -hmm. uh, but we also want to make sure that we provide brand new experiences for everybody. So as we saw with the Chemical Plant uh, reveal yes. uh, last week, uh, Chemical Plant traditionally a very horizontal level, mm -hmm. and so like, what's the best way? To remix that, well, we're just going to send it straight up then. And so that's yeah. where kind of the bouncy uh, floor gimmick and the jelly uh, all came from, basically. And, and um, it's um, our lead level designer, Jared at Pagoda West, and I have like a very um, similar thought process with stuff. So, like, we both love like Sonic CD and Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Yeah, and yeah. so I think people can expect like the big, wide open spaces of Sonic CD, but the more streamlined approach of Sonic 3 and Knuckles, cool, cool. to where it's like we're preventing like backtracking and I mean, all that other stuff. One thing that is also fascinating to me about this game is the structure of, of it's it's mostly classic levels, but you've got this interesting breakdown where, from what people have seen, like Act 1 sort of echoes the original act with some interesting tweaks and changes in the addition of, for example, Elemental Shield. So like in Chemical Plant Act 1, you now can get the Bubble Shield and not have to worry about drowning, for example. But then Act 2 is where you kind of allow yourselves to get really, really weird with it. And I'd love to hear uh, Hunter and Simon talk about like like, what you what what are the new elements that you bring to a classic stage? How do you how do you make that your own, and why is that important to you? When uh, when we come to uh, the point where we're going to be developing one of the stages, we try and plan out a lot of the gimmicks and stuff first. But sometimes as we're as we're developing it, we come up with uh, ideas or just the implementation kind of changes a little bit uh, based on how how we're putting it together, and uh, we just kind of uh, work out what what works, what's fun. I mean, you, you get the sense playing the game that, like, there are so many unique creative ideas for things that move you around the level, for new enemy designs. You get the sense that this game was made by people who have spent the past 20 years fantasizing about what they would do if they were to make a new 2D Sonic. Uh, yeah, a lot of us, a lot of us have been uh, longtime Sonic fans, like, real long time. Most of us, we've pretty much been building up to this just with our hobby life. We've been trying for a long time to uh, recapture Sonic uh, ourselves in the kind of stuff that we do. We have a lot of experience with it now just to bring it to bring it back now that we're working with Sega. Yeah. yeah, another thing that's super helpful in the development process and coming up with ways to make the levels fresh and also kind of make it feel like we're carrying the torch as opposed to trying to one-up the originals is that we have a very rare opportunity to work closely with Sonic Team, mm -hmm. especially Izuka-san and Hoshino-san. And they've been providing us a lot of guidance through the process. And so they're making sure that we don't go off the rails into something that doesn't feel like Sonic. And then so we're kind of guided by them plus our intuitive sense of uh, what a Sonic game should be based on yeah. just us being familiar it, with the it games. It feels like you have a great intuition with that stuff. And I, I think my, my last kind of question would be, of what we've seen, of all the stages we've that are out there so far, like what is the single element that when you see it, when you see someone play Sonic Mania, what's like the most exciting thing for you that you're maybe proudest of or most excited by? Mostly just whenever, whenever somebody comes across just anything that we've added personally to the game, it's, it's just always great because We've seen such a positive reaction to basically everything, and that's just—it's just, it's just uh, wonderful. It like keeps us going. <laughs> is there is there something in particular that you've added, Simon, that like you you're really like proud of that you got into the game? 
Uh, I think some of the stuff I'm the most proud of, we haven't shown yet. Okay. All right. Understood. <laughs> understood. Hunter? Uh, I think for me, um, one of the things that makes me happy is whenever I see, uh, you know, younger kids playing the game mm. and their eyes light up with the same look that I had when I first played the games as a kid. And so I really hope that we can inspire children to uh, enjoy Sonic just as much as we were able to when we were growing up. For sure. I'd also like to add that he made that DNA riser gimmick, and he Hunter was so did? yeah, that was me. <laughs> he was so proud of it, and he made it. He made it his Facebook cover photo like that <laughs> afternoon. That's a good sign. If, if, like you want to know what element he's proud of? There, it's on his Facebook. So I should have asked everyone to name an element someone else is proud of. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. Well. Yeah. Yeah. I think that um, Brad's most proud of. Uh, the work that he's done on chemical plant so far. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you guys saw uh, in the pre-order trailer too with the animation and everything. There was a, like little peek at Stardust Speedway. Yeah. And Sonic CD is like my one of my favorite games ever, maybe favorite all time. And so like for me to be able to work on that level, mm -hmm. uh, especially with all these other guys who have such great ideas to like really take that to the next step is been like a dream come true for me. Gotcha. Basically. And and I think lastly. Working with with Christian, obviously, yeah. is a, he's this is his engine. Uh, this game is kind of his baby. He he sort of spearheaded this whole getting Sonic fans working on a Sonic game in earnest. Uh, can you share any stories about sort of working with Christian and what it's been like being involved <laughs> with him and the development team? Oh man, these are going to be on the record. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> be careful. Yeah, a, a, a story you can share then. Okay. Yeah, well, I met him. I met him like forever ago. We we're both creating some uh, games of our own for uh, fan games. He told he told me eventually that um, he w got inspired by the one that I was creating already. But at the time, nobody really had anything on par with what Sega had done on the Genesis. Yeah, we we had started talking because of that, a little back and forth, talking about what we were doing and how we were doing it. And in 2009, he had come come to tell me that he was impressed by some of the stuff that I had been doing lately and uh, he wanted to know if I wanted to help him to recreate Sonic CD which was what eventually led into the uh, Sonic CD re-release across multiple platforms I'll say that you know working with Christian has been great he's taught me a lot of pretty much everything I've known about like game programming and stuff like that but you know there's there's a lot of people behind the game too and so I just like want to give a mention to the guys at Pagoda, like Tom, Jared, Taryn, T, who's doing the music, everybody else on the team, Greg, who's helping us out on the business development side and all that stuff. It's like, it's a big team going awesome. towards it. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you guys so much for your time. The game's yeah. coming out super soon. August 15th, is that correct? August 15th. August 15th. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much and stay tuned here for more E3 coverage. Thanks.